Sometimes, the virus gets past the first line of defense. And that's when the second one kicks in. In essence, an immune cell runs ahead and presents a bit of the virus to specialized cells called T cells and B cells. When they recognize the threat, they replicate and prepare for battle. This is called the adaptive immune system because it changes in response to specific threats. The B cells produce powerful molecules called antibodies. These target the virus, stopping it entering cells. The antibodies grab hold of virus, okay? So what they do is they grab hold of free virus and they hopefully destroy it. They, 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 they block it from binding. They tag it, if you like, for destruction. Once a virus gets into a cell and it multiplies within the cell, the antibodies often don't have much effect. So you want to get rid of those virus-producing cell factories. That's what these killer T cells do. These are real killer T cells. They patrol our bodies, hunting virus-infected cells. They mold around cell surfaces, checking for signs of infection. If they find any, they deliver a lethal toxin, visible here in red. This causes the infected cell to self-destruct. Then the T cell moves on, seeking another target. They're the assassins. They're the ones that bump off the virus factories. And that's, uh, that's what we got the Nobel Prize for. <laughs> that's, a, that's a Nobel Prize chocolate. <laughs> you buy them at the Nobel Museum in, in Stockholm. <laughs> Once the battle is over, memory cells remain. Our immune system has learned what to do. It's primed to respond rapidly should the virus ever appear again. But it can take days, even weeks, for the memory cells to form. Oh.